The iPhone keyboard can be horrible if you don't know how to use it properly, especially when you use it all the time throughout the day. So in this video, I'll quickly show you 10 tips to improve your typing experience. So with that, let's begin. First is the setup. Let's get the basics in order before typing anything at all. Bring up the keyboard and hold the globe key. From here, you can set your keyboard layout compactness if you'd like, as well as access the keyboard settings. Have a play around with these, though the main option is the one at the top, which allows you to add multiple languages to your keyboard. If you decide to add multiple languages, they will be accessible to you at any time, and you can cycle between these by tapping or holding on the globe key. Talking of languages and emojis, if you tap and hold on a key, you'll get different options regarding accents and other characters depending on your language. This applies to other keys, such as punctuation, symbols, and even currency, as you can see here. Also, tap and hold on certain emojis to change your skin tones, and in some cases, granular control of various people within the emoji. Next up are haptics. Now, if you want to actually feel like you're typing, as opposed to poking at glass, then go into your settings, and into the haptics menu. Here, scroll down to the bottom and you'll have a sub menu to adjust the sound and haptics of your keyboard. I personally have this on as that way it gives me that little bit of extra feedback to know that I've hit a key. Now if you prefer swiping instead of typing, then you can simply swipe on your keyboard between the letters and when you let go, the words will be typed for you with quite good degree of accuracy I must say. Or if you're feeling extra lazy, then consider using dictation. In recent iOS updates, this has got quite a bit better, so now you can stop speaking and use your fingers while dictation is enabled. For example, you could start dictation, stop talking and then type with your fingers whatever you need and then start talking again and the dictation will start typing where you left the cursor. Pretty handy. On a similar note, the iPhone iPhone keyboard has a load of different swipe gestures. I did a video previously covering iPhone gestures across the whole system not too long ago, so I would highly recommend checking that one out. But here are the main ones for your keyboard. The first one is if you hold the spacebar, you can use it as a trackpad, so you can precisely control where the cursor goes. The second is to do with selecting text and tapping. Tap once and you'll place the cursor at either the start or the end of a word. If you tap twice, you'll select that word, and three times you'll select the paragraph. Again, I have a full video dedicated to gestures, so be sure to check that out after this one. What can also be quite useful is typing efficiency. I'm sure you know of the predictive text options that appear at the top of your keyboard, but you'll also get predictions for the next word in your text field. If you press the spacebar, these suggestions will automatically get inserted for you. Similarly, some basic ones are if you double press the spacebar at the end of a word, it will place a full stop and double pressing the shift will capitalize the keyboard for you. I'm sure you knew this one, but just thought to cover it anyway. A lesser known one though is when inputting punctuation. You can hold and then drag from the one 1, 2, 3 button to the comma position let's say and then let go. This will then convert the keyboard back to the letters tab so it's much more efficient compared to tapping twice. And one more for typing efficiency would be holding down on certain keys giving you suffixes depending on the application. This works in Safari as well as email as well as you can see here. Now I'm going to shift into more niche uses of the keyboard so you'll really want to pay attention here. Heading into the messages app if you rotate your iPhone landscape you get the handwriting icon in the bottom right. From here you can send a handwritten message and I find this to be way more expressive than the digital touch one. Once the person receives this message, it will also write the text in the same way you did, so it can be quite fun to send messages this way. On the topic of messages and messaging apps, let's talk about the emoji keyboard a bit more. Firstly, you have the Memoji option on the left, where you can send an animated version of yourself to others, as well as choose from some other animals in here. Another tip many people don't know is that you can touch and hold on the emojis, and they will lift away from your keyboard as a sticker. From here, you can then place the sticker in the chat. Pretty neat. And finally, we have text abbreviations. This way, if there's some commonly used phrases that you use when chatting to someone in a conversation, you can set them up in the keyboard settings and by going to text replacement. Now, when you type this special string of characters, the whole thing gets typed out. So yeah, hopefully you learned something, and if you did, share the video to someone else. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.